Hi everybody and welcome back. Okay, just a word of warning. I am narrating and recording elsewhere because my home is a little busy and noisy so you might get a little echo. And I also have the dogs with me so if you hear a few grunts and barks and scratching noises then you'll know it is the doggies. Anyway, today's video will be a little different from what I've been doing for the past year and for a nanosecond I want to go back to where I was two to three years ago where my interest was fundamentally in the royal family but I was also looking beyond the facade. Years ago, I did extensive research into the financial partners, the global aspirations, etc. But it was a lot of work with little interest in it. Most people like and want the salacious gossip and really cannot be bothered with the more worrying aspects of the royal family or monarchy and many other issues. So if you think you already know where I'm going with this and you don't like it, then click out now. This is not a I hate Joe or Susie or then Charles or Harry, Meghan or Catherine. This is a factual video during which I'm asking questions. And those questions are mostly rhetorical questions. Things those who are staying should ask themselves and look into themselves and indeed decide the answers for themselves. So I'm going to start off with a quote from a royal commentator. And I think it was Rebecca English commenting on why William is trademarking the Royal Foundation of the Prince and Princess of Wales in the United States. But guys, please don't shoot me if it wasn't her. <laughs> anyway, she said, Prince William is serious about the fact that he will have an impact across the globe in years to come. The Cape Mancy, former Mail on Sunday editor, on the same subject said, the issue of philanthropy is so developed in America, it is more part of the setup of how American communities and businesses work. So you do have to have a foothold in America if you are starting a big global initiative. So what am I hearing both these women say? I am hearing impact across the globe and global initiative. That is what I'm hearing and quite frankly it gives me shivers up my spine. If you are brave enough to stay and listen then I'm begging for your patience as I explain why this does not sit well with me. A couple of years ago I made a video and I can't quite remember the title and I forgot to look it up but I will and I will link it in the description box below. I think it was something like um, what does the royal family and Humpty Dumpty have in, in common or something like that. But I'll look it up and link it in the description box. And since then I may have mentioned companies, global companies like BlackRock and Vanguard in passing. I do remember that of the more than 800 videos I made in at least one, I mentioned William and Catherine's Heads Together Mental Health Charity and its liaison with Black Rock Incorporated. But just set that aside for a moment. Although I do not want you to forget about it, just file it away for now. We'll get back to it. Recently, I heard more creators on the Royal Beat talk about Black Rock. And I even received some questions from some of you after Lady C recently mentioned Harry, Meghan and Black Rock Incorporated in one sentence. A subscriber even asked whether I think it is true that Black Rock is funding and or backing Meghan and Harry. Now, what I think does not really matter. What can be proven 
and what you can all deduce from the information I share with you is what really matters. So who and what is BlackRock Incorporated? In short, they are the biggest investment management firm in the entire world. And I'm going to link an old but very simple video about who and what BlackRock Incorporated is. However, the only thing which has changed since that video was made is that BlackRock is now in more countries like China and South Africa than when that video was made. And instead of managing holdings and investments to the value of $6.3 trillion, they are now managing assets, investments and holdings to the value of about $16 trillion. In 2019, the CEO of BlackRock, Lawrence or Larry Fink, became a member of the World Economic Forum International Business Council. And he is also on the World Economic Forum's Board of Trustees. So let me quickly tell you who else was on the Board of Trustees in 2019. And I haven't bothered to check who is still on the board, but let's carry on. Anyway, I'm also not going to read you all the members of the board of the World Economic Forum, but only those who some of you may recognize. Okay, Mark Benioff, Chairman and CEO of Salesforce. Now, you've heard about Salesforce connected to Harry and Meghan before. Mark Carney, Governor of the Bank of England. Christia Freeland, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Canada. Okay, and I'm going to butcher some of these names. Fabiola Gianotti, European Organization for Nuclear Research. Al Gore, ex-Vice President of the United States. Herman Greff, Russian Federation. Christine Lagarde, MD International Monetary Fund. Ursula von der Leyen, President of the European Commission, Her Majesty Queen Rania Al Abdullah, Kingdom of Jordan, and of course, Klaus Schwab and a few others. So talk about BlackRock Incorporated and we have to ask about Vanguard. Who is Vanguard? What is Vanguard? Vanguard is an American registered investment advisor based in Pennsylvania with about $7.7 .7 trillion of global assets under its management. But my dear friends, hang on to your booties. Who is the largest shareholder in Vanguard? Nobody else but BlackRock. Surprising or shocking? <laughs> you have not heard anything yet. The third largest asset management firm State Street is owned by Tada Black Rock. So am I BSing you when I tell you that in reality Black Rock, Vanguard and State Street is actually one and the same thing? No. No. Black Rock owns majority share in Vanguard and BlackRock owns State Street. So, of course, they want and the same thing. Now, <laughs> are you bored yet? Well, don't be, because I'm getting to the juicy part very soon. <laughs> Just hang in there. Now, I know you know this, but I'm going to say it for effect. The 16 trillion synonymous with black rock, the 7.7 .7 trillion of Vanguard, and the 3.6 trillion of State Street are assets under the management. Or then, 27.3 trillion dollars are being managed by this conglomerate. And what are these assets? 
here is the part you need to know. Well, these assets are things like your pension fund. Concerned and interested now? Well, you should be. Ignorance is not always bliss. And before I carry on, I want you to listen to this. Three giant corporations, BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard, which own collectively, they own each other, so it's really one giant corporation. But they also own 89% of the S&P 500. They own everything. They've now decided to buy every single family home in America. So if they stay on the current trajectory, they will own 60% of the homes in this country, single family homes by 2030. They literally are trying to buy everything. The head of it, Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, is on the board of the World Economic Forum. And what they, you know, they've said, we want this great reset, which is you will own nothing and you will be happy. Well, they're on their way to making sure that we don't own anything. You all probably have heard of people who are about to buy a home. And somebody comes in with, at the last minute with cash offer and cash off the, out of the market. Right. And it's usually an LLC with an ambiguous name. But if you trace that up, you'll find it's owned by BlackRock. Now, I'm just going to tell you a short personal story to illustrate what I'm going to tell you next, just to make it more interesting. About four months ago, we were interested in a house in our neighboring town, one we could actually afford. In other words, a cheapie. Yes, indeed, it needed a bit of work, but we liked it. But twice, we were prevented by an agent from viewing the property with a story each time which did not make sense. When we found the third time, exactly about 12 hours after the previous appointment, we were told the house was sold. About a month later, it happened again. The same agency, same area, similar property, and obviously price. Then about a month later, it happened a third time. So I became suspicious. And long story short, the agency or agent reserved these cheaper properties for a friend or buddy or business partner, who knows, who goes and slaps a layer of paint and maybe tweak the bathrooms or kitchen a little and then he goes on to sell these houses. He puts them back in the market and he sells them for double or triple of what he paid for them. Okay, so that is small fry compared to what BlackRock can do with their money and power. Just use your imagination. Think of $23 trillion under their management and think of what they can do. Now, remember that Larry Fink is on the board of trustees of the World Economic Forum. And the World Economic Forum is telling us that utopia will be us owning nothing and being happy about it. I want you to pause for a minute and let that sink in. Phew, okay, now while I was in Canada, I did extensive research on who actually owns Harry and Meghan's Montecito mansion. Now when I say I did the research, I'm actually talking shite, okay? I had three other people, among which a retired United States bank official and a chartered accountant actually doing the work for me. And I can tell you under oath that unless any of them were the actual bank official who negotiated the original mortgage or Rick Ganahl, there is no way they or anyone else can know who the human entity is who owns that property. 
Now I'll try again, as, as I said, I've made more than 800 videos by now, but I'll try and link the videos I did on that in the description box below as well. But I don't know whether I'll have the time or even the guts to search through 800 videos. But because I know more or less when I made it, maybe it won't be too difficult. Anyway, let's carry on. The point is, the property could very well belong to one of BlackRock's obscure subsidiaries or trusts, etc. Aha, you say. No, wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 not yet. Remember, BlackRock does not use their own money. So let's imagine that BlackRock did buy that property for Harry and Meghan. Whose money did they use? Did someone give them seven or nine million to invest in a bargain property for Harry and Meghan? And if so, then who? So is it completely outside the realm of possibility that BlackRock is indeed backing or supporting Harry and Meghan? No, it is not. The question is just, if true, then who put the money in? Who gave them the money to invest in a home for Harry and Meghan? Why would you or anyone actually get angry with me or anyone else for saying it is also not outside the realm of possibility that Charles and or William could have been the human who passed the seven or nine million to BlackRock to invest in this property. Because if you look at the screen, you will see that BlackRock Incorporated is one of the founding partners of Heads Together, a royal foundation charity founded by Prince William, Catherine and Harry. If you search hard enough, you will also find that Larry Fink and the now King Charles III actually know each other or then met on a few occasions, one being at Davos in 2020. So is it honestly strange or slander, whatever some of you want to call it, to say that one, there is a possibility that Harry is being helped in inverted commas, by someone via BlackRock. Or two, that William's global agenda may not be the wonderful actions of humanitarianism and charity, but that unlike his brother and sister-in-law's delusions, it may be a real bid for global leadership and dominance. And what happens to Britain, the countries of the Commonwealth realm and the Commonwealth? Are we to accept that they will no longer be the priority of the current king and his son as they are aiming higher, namely for global influence and power? If so, how do you feel about it? Is that why, against all expectations, William is not letting go of the controversial Duchy of Cornwall leasehold scenario. And Harry, is he truly supporting himself and his family or are their funds still coming his way via BlackRock? If so, how do the British people who struggled to keep the heat on last winter and will likely struggle more this winter feel about British money leaving the country and going to a runaway prince? I have so many questions that I want to ask, but I think you can come up with many more yourselves because you, well, most of my subscribers 
actually live in the United States and the United Kingdom. So you live in your circumstances, whether it's political or financial. Anyway, guys, so that is just information I'm passing on at this point, it's possibilities and speculation, etc. But I feel that people need to be informed, okay? And you yourselves can then take this information, do your own research, and make up your own mind. Okay, guys and girls, the next one will be a lighter topic. <laughs> and I'm going to shake it up a bit this week and not just stick with the British royals, but bring you a couple of surprises. So, until I see you on the next one, please take good care of yourselves. Bye.